too. Um, and if there are heads of schools who believe in it, they'll do it, even though they have limited funds. So I can't give you comfort on it, because I totally see the problem, but I do believe generally we need to understand that which can be measured and should be measured, will be measured, and we should be held responsible for it. But there are other things we do in education, and that we do in arts and culture, that we do because we believe in them. They should be done to a high quality, they should be excellent, we could be assessed on how excellent they are, um, but you can't always demonstrate an outcome as you can with, say, recidivism, you know, from offenders in prison. It isn't quite like that. So, in arts and culture generally, we do have this problem that we are, and I wouldn't use this outside this room, we're a bit more touchy-feely, which is a good thing. That's part of our benefit. Uh, <coughs> we're more human. But in the touchy-feely area, it's more difficult to measure. So you have my sympathy. Thank you for the question. I wanted to say a very quick word in the few minutes I've got left about some of the specifics the Arts Council has been involved in. We had a thing called Catalyst, which we started in 2011, which was to bring public money, lottery money, matching against um, privately raised money to create expendable endowments for arts organisations. It was intended, particularly for arts organisations outside London, to get them into a different league of fundraising. Uh, and that altogether, including the Arts Council money, has raised uh, 49 million pounds. And we're now going into a catalyst evolve, I think we're calling it today. And that's the next stage where we're taking bids and I think we're announcing the successful applications shortly um, for arts organisations, most of which again will be across the country, to build their skill, expertise, and development fundraising teams, Catalyst Evolve. We've also <coughs> supported the, a course for professional fundraisers in the arts, which um, uh, graduates have been going on. It's accredited by Leeds University. I think we're in year three of that now. And those fundraisers, they get attachments in organizations, um, and then they plan out and work in the industry. So we're trying to raise the level of professionalism in fundraising in arts and culture. Um, and so, uh, we have a range, as it were, of, um, of things we're doing. And uh, Claire, I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list now, but Claire, if any of you are interested in other measures that the Arts Council is taking to try and assist uh, fundraising arts culture, do ask me. I do think that the drive goes on just outside specifically the narrow confines of philanthropy for diversifying the revenues of arts organisations. And that's a really, really important thing. It isn't just fundraising. So what I said earlier about the cake of our main funded organizations, they're called national portfolio organizations, there are about 700 of them. Their cake, their revenue has got bigger in the last three, four years despite the cuts. Why is that? Well, not because of philanthropy, that's gone up slowly, very slowly, from about 9, 10% of the cake to about 12.5% of the cake. It's gone up because of commercial revenues. So arts organizations led by a new generation of good business leaders are driving forward their hospitality offer, their ticket sale, their data collection, their marketing, and their much more effective businesses. But also we just got behind something called the Arts Impact Fund. It's a sort of pilot to look at loans rather than grants. So the Arts Impact Fund is a commingling of money from the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, from trusts and foundations, uh, Esme, Fairburn and Nesta, and public money from the Arts Council. It's a £7 million fund, and instead of giving Grants, that is making loans to arts organisations that have got securitizable revenue. And we've already made, uh, I think, three loans of average 200, 300, one of 600,000 pounds. This is to people who want to borrow money against their revenue. Maybe they want to double the size of their cafe, um, whatever it is, and it's going to underpin their future revenue. We also make small capital grants to organisations who can do something that will deliver revenues long term. Uh, there's a theatre company in Newcastle that's a partner in a pub because of some money we gave them, and it gives them £100,000 a year for their new writer's fund. One of their new writers, by the way, originally was Lee Hall, who wrote Billy Elliot, so they're quite classy. Um, there's the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, where we gave them a capital grant for the pay car park, and they now have about four or £500,000 of extra revenue a year from that. Um, 
And there are all sorts of other things we petition government for, including a whole series of tax credits, which we now have for the performing arts, which is bringing also millions into sex. So at all, on all fronts, we're trying to diversify revenues, and I just want to put it in context that philanthropy is one of those. Now, I just want to finish, because I'm allowed about another two minutes, two or three thoughts about Brexit. As I said to you earlier, we woke up 12 days ago to find a country divided by age, divided by wealth, and divided by geography. And we all got a very big shock. And it doesn't matter whether we voted to leave or remain, we all got a shock. And one of the shocks was how divided our country was. And one of the things about arts and culture is it's meant to be, and is, a great unifier when properly deployed. As for Brexit's effect on fundraising itself, I just leave you two or three thoughts. <clears throat> I think it's going to be tougher. That's a statement of the obvious, but it's really important about working out where it's going to be tougher. We know what happened in the credit crunch in 2008. Corporate giving fell off a cliff. In arts and culture, individual giving went up. In fact, individuals, uh, in the third NPOs, went up by 23% between 2011 and 2015. Individuals were worse off, but they gave more money. That may be one of the things we have to replicate in the next three or four years, as companies, once again, find themselves challenged in what may be a recession. <coughs> may not be, maybe. We may find, again, we um, rely on individuals. We know that trusts can only give away what their funds yield. And if, if the stock market isn't performing, their funds will be yielding less. Uh, legacies, I think, quite a lot depend on house prices. So I'm very concerned about how legacies are going to go forward. But they might be worth less if, if the house uh, market does uh, do much worse. And as I say, uh, corporate giving is something that I'm worried about. I don't really think corporate giving ever recovered from 2008. I don't think it's got slightly better. And how we communicate with companies and how we get into their CSR objectives in favor of not just of arts, culture, but charity, I think is a challenge for us all. At that point, I have overshot my welcome by two minutes. May I thank you all very much for listening to me, and thank you for your questions, which are a great addition to what I have to say. Thank you very much.